I want to thank you all and, and Senator Casey for coming here today. Um, I had a big speech prepared, Senator, but I know you're a deadline. I know you have to get to do it well. But I just want to stress the importance that uh, Mr. Casey has in our community and, and how much he values our communities like ours throughout the Commonwealth and as well as our vote. And that's why he's here today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Casey to all of you. And before that, um, Senator, I wanted to go around the room real quick. If you could stand up, if you're an elected official, one of my fellow elected officials here in Armstrong County, can you just kind of raise your hand and uh, the municipality that you may represent. Jim Swartz, Mayor of Freeport Borough. Hey, Mayor, thank you. You're welcome to be here. Anthony Shea, Lynchburg School Board, and I'm PJ Cindy Barostek, uh, Mayor of Paul Borough. Thank you, Mayor. Christian Vicaro, Lynchburg Borough Council. Watch the big board, Auditor North Carolina. Carol Fennings, Forsy, Borough Council. Randy Cloak, Applewalt Borough. Thank you. Um, as you see, uh, Senator, we have a, uh, a lot of uh, representation from a lot of small communities throughout uh, Armstrong County. So, again, thank you all for uh, coming out to, today. And, uh, Senator? Well, good to see you. Thanks very much. Well, thanks for gathering today. I realize that uh, as I come here uh, on a rainy Saturday, there's probably other places you could have been, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> This is the only thing going on in your life, helping uh, re-elect uh, me to the senator, re-electing Governor Wolf for helping all of our candidates. But the fact that you're here indicates that you care deeply about your country. Because if you thought everything was just going real well and everything was perfect in Washington, you may not be here. You'd be doing other things. But I think because we know we have to bring change, we've had so many people across our commonwealth and across our country come out and engage and organize and stay on the phone and knocking on doors and <clears throat> engaging on social media, however, however people want to engage in our system, you're here to do that. We're grateful for that. I wanted to say how much I appreciate the fact that you're willing not just to help me, but to help a lot of other candidates running this year. I have never seen, in my time as a public official, the kind of intensity, the kind of uh, uh, engagement, and the kind of focus that people have brought to this campaign. And one of the reasons they're engaged is because they not only don't think we're headed in the right direction, they're very concerned about what has happened in the last year and a half. Just consider what has happened in Washington since January of 2017. The Republican Party in Washington spent most of that year doing a couple of things which are destructive for the country. Number one is they tried to rip away health care from not just millions of people, but virtually every bill they put forward would rip away health care from over 20 million people. Just, just think about the one bill that everyone forgets about. Nobody remembers this, but I'm going to keep talking about it during the course of this campaign. The first health care bill that they put forward, or I shouldn't even call it a health care bill, the first repeal bill they put forward. That would have wiped out health care for all those millions of people, but it also had a big tax cut right in the middle of the bill. And then they passed the bill to the House of Representatives. My opponent, the congressman, voted for it. Okay? He's going to hear about this in the campaign. Then they went to the White House and had a big beer party. Remember that? They, first of all, forgot their civics lesson. You've got to pass it through the Senate before you can have a victory party. But they had a big victory party because they were going to they were going to take away health care from uh, millions of Americans. Just think about Armstrong County: 5,744 5, people. I just looked at this number today: 5,744 people in Armstrong County got health care because of that because of the Affordable Care Act. And more than 68 percent of those people got their health care through Medicaid expansion which is not only important for someone's health care, that that many Americans, more than half of all Americans who got health care got through Medicaid expansion. It's especially important when you and Lackawanna County and every county I know is dealing with the opioid crisis. 
Thank God we have Medicaid expansion. Some people can get treatment and coverage only, only because they have Medicaid expansion. But that's what the House tried to rip away. So one of my jobs is not just to point that out, but is to make damn sure that those 5,744 people and more if necessary who live in this county have health care today, they have it tomorrow, they have it next year, and they have it for as long as they need. And yet the House voted in that bill not only to take away health care, but to give the super rich a big tax cut. So they started the year, think about this, they started the year trying to take away health care from all those Americans, including here in Armstrong County. And I hold the Republican Party directly responsible for this. But in addition to that, they tried to cut taxes for rich people in the same bill. So that effort ultimately failed in July of 2017, when John McCain put his thumb down instead of up, right? He had the courage to look squarely at that bill and say this is the wrong legislation. But remember what happened at the end of the year. They failed on their health care vote, but they were successful on their tax bill. They ran through a bill that helps, once again, the super rich and big corporations, puts everyone in this room and everyone you know in debt to do it. A trillion and a half of debt, so the corporations got a big tax cut. With no guarantee of job growth, by the way. No guarantee of wage growth, by the way. But they gave corporations that, and they gave the top 1% one of the biggest tax cuts imaginable. But remember what they also did in the tax bill. They, they took a big hit out of, uh, or took a big chunk out of the health care policy in the United States of America when they made the individual mandate no longer part of our law. So because of that tax bill, there is an adverse health care consequence. Millions, maybe not 20 million, but several million people will lose their health care because of that tax bill. That's going to happen over the next couple of years. That's what the Republican Party was up to for most of 2017. And they continue it in 2018. The House voted on a budget, House a Budget Committee, voted just in June. No one talks about this. We're going to make sure people know about it. Voted on a voted out a budget in June of 2018, which would make much further cuts to health care. It would cut Medicare by 537 billion dollars. That's what they voted on in June. 530 billion dollar cut to Medicare. And you'll hear Republicans say, "Oh no, we don't we don't touch Medicare. It's only that Medicaid program over there for those people." They kind of point away. That's not you. That's for those people. Well, those people happen to be part of the American family on Medicaid. Kids with a disability. Seniors trying to get into a nursing home. Working families who are struggling but still need the, the help of Medicaid. So they're part of our family too. And we fight hard for members of our family. And if someone, someone tries to take health care away from someone in our family, we knock their head off, figuratively speaking, of course, in a political sense. That means win the election. That's how you knock their head off, win the election. But Medicare is also on the ballot. I'm running uh, some television ads now telling the people of southwestern Pennsylvania about my opponent's voting record when it came to uh, Medicare. So if they want to have a big fight, about health care in this campaign, and they want to, want to only fight about one issue, I'm ready for that fight. I'll, I'll take that fight any day of the week. Any day of the week, if, if they want to have a fight about that. You know what, it even got worse this year. While they were proposing that, that uh, obnoxious budget to cut health care by $2 trillion over the next 10 years, including the Medicare cut of $537 billion. Notice I've said it three times now. You might hear it three more times. We'll cut to Medicare. But not only were they doing that, but they're also now in a court of law trying to take away the protections for pre-existing conditions. That, don't, don't worry, it only affects 5.3 million Pennsylvanians and about 130 million across the country. That's what, that's what the agenda is of the National Republican Party. So if they want to have a fight about health care, we're ready for that fight. Because you know what? We're Americans. We know that we have the strongest economy in the world, for sure. 
We have the strongest military in the world, for sure, but we're also the country that takes care of people. When a child with a disability has, needs the benefit of Medicaid, we say you're going to have it and we're going to pay for it. And if that means some, some wealthy person has to pay more in taxes, you're damn right they will to pay for that kid who needs the protection of Medicaid because that child has a disability. Like the child I saw in Wilkesboro a couple of weeks ago, we had a discussion about pre-existing conditions. There was a child sitting right in front of us who was the child and her, her mom and her grandmother were there. This child is 15 years old, confined to a wheelchair, she has cerebral palsy, she's blind in one eye, her name is Alexa. She was sitting there and her grandmother got up to leave towards the end of the meeting. And this is what her grandmother said. You have the grandmother, the mom, and a, and a nurse right there to help all the time because that child has the benefit of Medicaid. And as the, the grandmother was leaving, she started getting very emotional about the care of her granddaughter. And she said, all she wants is her health care. That's, that's all she wants every day. She said, we can't take her out. She can't go out and socialize like some 15-year-olds. She, she said she can't even go to a movie. All she wants is her health care. That child and her mother and her grandmother shouldn't have to worry for 15 minutes about whether or not that child's going to have health care. Because some damn politician in Washington says that it's good to cut the budget and give away the store to rich people and corporations. That's not America. That is not America. That is not who we are as a people. So if they want to fight about this, we're ready. We're going to fight all the way to Election Day, and we're going to win. Thank you very much.